Hey, what's up? It's John from Coding Addict and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to discuss how to use Form Data API and React, which is an awesome interface for working with form inputs. It has quite a few methods, but in this video, we'll only cover a few of them. If you're interested in learning more about the Form Data API, please refer to the JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover it in greater detail. And I'll leave the link to the JavaScript Nuggets video in the description, as well as the link to the GitHub repository. So if you ever want to access this code, just reference the description. So forms in React. Let's imagine the situation where basically I have a form with three inputs, name, email, and password. And effectively, I have a few choices. I can set up the controlled inputs. Basically, I set up the state value, handle change, and all of that cool stuff. Or I can go with use ref. So I set up the use refs. And then once I submit, I can access them one by one. Now, there's another way how we can grab all of the values, and that is by using form data API, which in my opinion actually is better, especially if you have quite a few inputs, simply because you can grab all of the values with pretty much two lines of code. Now, in order to get started with form data API, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to install. It's coming from the JavaScript. The only thing we need to provide is the actual form element. So in here, I have the form, I have the inputs, all of that is great. And I also have the on submit. So in the on submit, the first thing that I want to do is prevent the default. And then up next, I want to invoke the form data. And in order to access the form element, this one over here that we need to pass in, essentially, we'll use event current target. So current target is always going to give the element which we attach the event to. And basically, in our case, that's the form. So we need to come up with some kind of variable. In this case, I'm going to go with form data, and that is equal to new. And then form data, like I said, we don't need to install anything. We just need to provide a form. And yes, of course, when you're working with vanilla JS, you'll use document query selector and then grab the form. Or of course, you can also use the current target there as well. So we go here with event dot current target, we grab the form data. And now let's log it. Now don't freak out. If in the console, you basically see just this, you just see the interface. Yes, everything is correct. I remember first time I started working with form data, API, I was thinking that I'm passing in some wrong value over here. Now, basically, we get the interface. And then we'll use these methods to essentially get the data. Now, like I mentioned before, there are quite a few methods over here. What we're interested in is the get also the values and entries. So here's the thing with form data API, essentially, it returns an array of arrays. So there's going to be one array, and then each input is going to be represented with another array. And in there, we'll have the name and we'll have the value. Now we will use object from entries to turn this into a object. But we'll also use the values, which essentially just grabs those values of the inputs to check for the empty ones. Now, we can always start with the get, which basically just returns the value of individual input. So let's try this one out over here. First, I guess I'm going to comment this one out or remove it. We don't really need it here. Just keep in mind that there's a readme. You can always find the references to everything we're doing during the video, just in case you ever need to. So let's go over here. And first, let's just grab the value of the email field. Now keep in mind one important thing. In order for this to work, the input must 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 have a name. And of course, the value that will pass in in a second needs to match. So if there's going to be no name, then of course, you won't be able to do that. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say email is equal to and then form data. And then we're looking for get. And then we want to pass in that name. So in this case, it's going to be an email. And if I go over here, and if I log it, you probably already guess 
that I'm going to get that value. So let me wipe this one clean. Let me refresh and check it out. Now I have my email. So yes, one by one, you can access them like this. And then once you have those values, you can do something with them. Now, of course, that something is checking whether all of the values are provided. That something is sending it to a server and hopefully you see where I'm going with this. So that essentially is our first flavor. Now there's another flavor which involves a little bit of magic where basically we can get all of the values right away. So first let me just get the values and then we'll kind of backstep a little bit and I'll show you what is happening under the hood. So essentially I can go here with data, then I'm gonna use object dot from entries and don't freak out. Yes, we'll discuss this method in a second. And essentially I just provide a form data. And what do you know, once I log, I'll have all of them nicely in the object. So at this point I can do whatever my functionality requires. Like I said, do something with those values, send it to a server and all of that cool stuff. Now, how is this possible? Well, you see, when it comes to form data API, essentially it returns a array of arrays, like I mentioned already before. So for this one, I'll log this. So I'm not gonna assign it to a variable, but of course, this is what you would normally do. So we go with log, then it has a little bit of interesting syntax where we have an array, we wanna spread out those values, then we go with form data, whatever basically is our variable, then dot, and notice these are all the options we have. And for now, I'll show you entries, and a little bit later, we'll cover the values. Just keep in mind that basically values is pretty much the same thing. We're just getting the values instead of the input and the value. So let's go here with entries, and then let's invoke it. And again, once I submit, notice something interesting. Now I have this array of arrays. So that's the values that we're getting back. So of course, if, for example, name is gonna be empty, there's gonna be nothing in here. But since I provided all of these values, I'm getting all of that data back. So here's the kicker. We can use object from entries, which again is coming from JavaScript, to essentially turn this into a object. So that's how the entire functionality works. We just grab the array of arrays and we pass it in and we get back the object we wanted. Now, two more things I wanna cover, actually three. I wanna cover how we can check for empty values pretty fast, how we can clear out the inputs. And also I'm going to cover how we can essentially set this one up as a utils function and then use it pretty much in any form in our project. So I'm going to remove these ones again. If you wanna reference them, they're available in the readme. And let me just showcase how we can quickly check for empty values. So we have the method for entries, and you already saw what it returns, but we also have just the values. So if I go over here, and if I go with dot, dot, dot form data, and again, we need to spread it out, yep, that's the syntax, values. Then if I log, you're probably not going to be surprised if you see in the console, just the values. And of course, I need to learn how to reference the correct variable. So let me clean this one out. Let me refresh and check it out. So notice, now I have this array with just the values. So what's really cool, I can use the array methods on it, more specifically includes, where I can say, hey, listen, if one of them is empty, well, then of course, I need to throw some kind of error. Now, in our case, we'll just log it, but you could show some kind of alert, toast, or whatever. So let me go over here, and basically I'll say const is empty, so come up with some kind of variable name, values includes, then provide the empty one, the empty string, and then we can right away set up the if condition. So if is empty, what do we wanna do? Well, like I said, in our case, We'll simply log the sucker. We'll say, please provide all values, and then we'll return. But normally, again, I already mentioned what are the things that you would do. So let's go back over here. In this case, I'll just remove the name just for the kickers, and bam, once we submit, we have please provide all values. Now, what's super, 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 super cool 
is the fact that it only checks for the inputs that are present in the form. And if this sounds somewhat iffy, well, let's take a look at our scenario. Notice over here, I have this login button, basically a button that displays whether the user wants to register or log in. Notice over here, how we're basically toggling this name input. And with controlled inputs, when you're submitting the form, you actually need to check whether the user is trying to log in or trying to register. Because of course, when you're logging in, you don't care about the name. Of course, it's going to be empty over here. If I'm logging in, the name is not going to be provided. And if you're checking for empty values, well, you will basically get an empty value, even though you're not looking for that input. Now, what's really, really awesome is the fact that with form data API, you right away get only the values for the inputs that are present. So what am I talking about? I don't need to do an extra check. Notice over here, I don't have this please provide values. I right away get this data because it basically ignores the fact that yes, there was an input, but now it's essentially hidden. And effectively the logic here is following. I have a state value and if it's present only then I display that input. And again, that's not going to be the case if you have controlled inputs because that empty string is still going to be stored in the state. Hopefully I make myself clear. So that's really cool. We can check for empty values. And before we cover the setup for the UDOS function, I also want to show you how we can clear out the values. You see, in this case, we are toggling the input. So once the input gets rendered in the browser, it's actually empty. But if you have some kind of state value, and you'll just update it just because you are re-rendering. Effectively, you won't wipe out the values in the form. And if you have a situation where you do want to wipe them out, let's say you're not navigating away from this form, you can use the reset method, which again comes from the HTML. So since we're accessing here the actual form element, we can go with event dot, then current target, and then we go with reset. Again, this will definitely depend on your setup. If let's say you have a setup where this is in a register page and then once you submit and everything's cool, you navigate away, you won't have to do that. I'm just talking about the situation if you are actually staying on a page and you do something with the data and you want to clear them out. Yes, you'll basically have to go with the reset over here. So let me add here clear inputs. So Essentially, at this point, we have covered all three phases. So we know how to get all of the data right away. We know how to check for empty values. And we also know how we can reset the form. Lastly, I want to cover how effectively we can set up a utils function, which we can use pretty much in any form. And in that case, with one line of code, we can grab all of the data and we can also check for empty values. Now for that, I'm going to navigate to my source. I'm going to create a new one. And as always, naming in programming is probably the hardest thing. So I'm just going to call this get form values JS. So essentially, that's my function. So in here, let's set it up. So get form and then values. Now this function is going to be looking for the form. So every time we'll invoke it, we'll pass in that event dot current target. So we'll say over here form, then let's navigate back to app.js and decide, well, which things essentially we can borrow from this on submit. Well, we can take the form data stuff. We can get the values and is empty. And also we can right away get the data. And essentially this get form values once invoked, once we pass in the form is nicely going to return all of that useful data. So now let me basically grab these ones here. Copy and paste. And as I know, that's the wrong spot. And yes, we'll have to change some things around here. And then also, I can grab this one over here. Now I'll leave the reset and I'll also leave the if statement. So let me navigate back over here. Let me pass this one and instead of event that current target, that's the one that will be passing 
from the component, in our case, this app, JSX, we're actually looking for the form. So we pass in the form, we can grab all of the values. So again, whatever inputs you have over there, we can right away check whether this is empty, and we can also right away get the data. And effectively, the only thing we'll need to do is to return is empty and data. So let me go here with return. In my case, I'm going to return it as an object. Please keep in mind that, of course, you can return it also as an array. But in my case, I'm going to go with is empty. That's the first one. And second one is going to be a data. And let's also not forget about the export. So export default and then get form values. Then let's navigate back to app JSX. I'm going to go above is empty. And first, I'm going to destructure them. I know that that's the object that I'm returning. So I can grab both of these values that is equal to get form and then values. And remember, in this case, we want to go with event dot current and target. So we want to pass this one in. And once we are in good shape, I also want to log the data, just so you can see that everything makes sense. So now let me navigate here, I'm going to go with some kind of values, I think for now, I'll actually comment this one out the reset one. And you'll see in the console that if everything is correct, we grab all of them. And of course, I didn't save that's why it wiped it out. However, if some of the values are missing, you'll see that we're not going to be successful. So notice over here, now I have please provide all values. And effectively, once we have this utils function in place, we can take it from one component to the next one, wherever we have the form, and basically right away get the data, as well as if one of the values is missing. And then of course, we can set up the checks for the empty ones, and eventually do something with the data. And if we want to clear all inputs, then we just go back to the good old HTML, and we use the reset method. So effectively, this is how we can use form data API in react. Hopefully everyone enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.